Welcome to the Ask Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, functional medicine doctor, and on the show, you're just one whiteboard away from solving your health puzzle. And today, we're going to talk about different types of leaky gut. Now, if you follow my video for a while, you know that we put out great content, information that you can't just find anywhere else. And my practice focus in my online virtual functional medicine practice, where I help clients, it's been 10 years now, over 5,000 people with chronic autoimmune condition is that the common denominator for a lot of people is leaky gut. Now, leaky gut is a chronic inflammation of the intestinal lining causing malabsorption and inflammation. And research shows that it's very difficult for you to develop autoimmune disease without first having leaky gut. So what that means is if you can heal leaky gut, you may be able to reverse or put your autoimmune to immune into remission. Now, in our office, we actually do testing to identify whether someone has leaky gut or not. Why would we do that? Because if you test leaky gut, then you know if that's something you need to deal with, if that's something you need to heal first, and also through testing, then you know the severity of your leaky gut. Now the thing with leaky gut is that the testing does not correlate with the severity of your symptom, meaning some people may have very severe leaky gut on testing, but their symptoms are kind of mild. They don't feel too terrible. While other people, they have a little bit of leaky gut, but their symptoms are very significant. They feel terrible. So we do the test because we want to know how severe it is so we know where the end point is. When do you know to stop healing leaky gut, right? So that's something that's very helpful through testing, and we definitely do that. Now, did you know that there are different types of leaky gut? And it depends on what type. It may change how you will treat it. So today, I want to talk about that. So let's start here. So here is an intestinal tract cut cross-section. This is the inner lining of your intestinal tract. And as you know, on the inner lining of your intestinal tract, there are these things called villi, or finger-like projection. What this does is increase the surface area so you get more nutrient absorption. In people with celiac disease, the internal villi is what gets worn out so that they become blunted. They sort of look like this, flat. And that's not good. That means you lose the, uh, the surface area to absorb nutrient. So people with celiac disease usually have malnutrition, nutrient deficiencies. So these villi are really important. Now, if we magnify this section, this is a section of that put, kind of spread out through here. So what we see here is that this is the lumen. The lumen means the internal opening. Let me write this more clear for you. Lumen, that's inside. This is the inside of your intestinal tract. So this will be kind of, if I extend this out, this might look like this, okay? This is the inside of your intestinal tract and these finger-like projections is what you see here. Each of these cells are individual intestinal cells and this is the nucleus with the DNA and each of these are individual epithelial cells. So these red dots are individual epithelial cells with its own DNA or nucleus. And so that the intestinal lining then, this layer of cell that kind of creates that barrier, that immune barrier of epithelial cells is only one layer thick, you see folks? It's only one layer thick. Compared to your skin, your dermal layers has multiple layers that makes up your skin, multiple layers of dermal cells. Your intestinal lining is only one layer thick. That's all it is that's separating the inner inside of your gut from the outside of the gut. So when this gets busted, you're gonna have major problems. Again, these are the cells that lines your lining. These are the villi. And in between the cells, there are these very unique proteins called zonulin. So the blue is zonulin. And zonulin is a very novel protein. It's a protein that kind of holds the intestinal cells together. And the space between the cell that you see here is called the small intestine tight junction because they're supposed to be sealed, but not all the time. So think of leaky gut as a normal process. You're supposed to have leaky gut. It's normal for you to have leaky gut. And why is leaky gut normal? Because this allows your immune system to survey and detect any bad guys. So you have these cells 
that are called dendritic cells. These are specialized immune cells that will actually reach through this tight junction and grab onto perhaps a microbe. So this might be a microbe. It'll grab onto the microbe, or let's just say it's a protein from your diet. If it grabs onto this protein, it looks at it and says, hey, it's a protein. It's supposed to be there. I'm going to leave it alone. And it comes back out. So this leaky gut allows for things for your immune system to out here to interact with the stuff inside your gut. So it's going to grab onto the protein and look at it. And if it's fine, if it's food, it's going to leave it alone. If it's not fine, like a microbe, then it's going to say, oh my God, I just picked up a bad guy right here. It stick its arm in, pick up the bad guy. Now it's going to elicit an immune response. Now white blood cells, cytokines, different kind of immune cells will start to rush to the surface, to this intestinal surface right here, and start to want to get in and attack this microbe. So that's the purpose of why you have leaky gut. And in fact, newborn babies are born with leaky gut. It's only after the first year of life then that this leaky gut starts to close up. So leaky gut is normal. And as you go through life, you're going to have leaky gut that may happen. Leaky gut is not a disease. It's a state that your body is in. It's kind of like if you drove down the three street and somebody cut you off and you get road rage, you give them the number one sign, you're upset at the moment. That doesn't mean it's a disease. Because the next moment, you might see that you won a lottery and you get super happy. So it's a state. It's, tr it's transitional. Okay? So it doesn't mean it's a disease. And that's why Western medicine don't treat it. Because it's not a disease state that they can pin something on it. Although, if you look at the scientific literature, just go to PubMed. Just Google that. .gov. It's a website where all the scientific literature, peer review literature is stored. If you go in there and you type in the scientific term for leaky gut, which is intestinal permeability. If you type that term in at that website, you'll find a number of citations, which means how many research articles related to the topic of le leaky gut. I'm going to give this homework to you. Just so you know, if you see like a hundred citation on the topic, that's pretty significant. Remember these citation, these articles are written by PhD, medical doctors, people who get a huge government grant to do certain type of research. They spend several years on it and sometimes the whole life and then to publish a paper. So these are no these are pretty big deal to be to have a research article written about a topic. If you have a hundred or a couple hundred or a thousand articles on a specific topic like diabetes or cardiovascular disease. That's a pretty big deal. So I'm going to give you this homework. Go look up intestinal permeability and tell me how many citation you pull up. So when you go to podmed.gov, right on the top of that page, there'll be a search box. You can search by topic. Type in intestinal permeability, just like the way it's written, and it'll show you results. It'll show you results. How many search results? It's going to give you a number. When you find that number, go do your homework. Come back and put it in a comment section how many citation results you found. And the number will shock you. Be the reason it's going to shock you because when you ask your medical practitioner about leaky gut, they're going to say either it doesn't exist or it's a fad or it's not a real thing. Or they'll say, well, it doesn't really matter. It has nothing to do with your condition. And yet, when you find a number of citations, when you do this homework, you see, wow, there's this many citations what the heck have they been reading? And the answer is, they haven't been reading. Not about intestinal permeability. Remember, medical doctors, they're great people. They're there to help. They want to make a difference. They're very bright. It's just that they're trained in allopathic Western medicine, which is drugs and surgery. And there's a time and place for drugs and surgery, but drugs and surgery don't fix every problem there is, right? Like if you're out of shape, and you get winded because you can't even run a mile because you haven't ran a mile in 20 years, what drug do you take so you can get in shape and run a mile? There's no drug. You just got to go out and actually run a mile and get in shape, right? So not everything regarding your health is a pill or drug or surgery. Sometimes just stuff you got to do. You got to change your lifestyle, change your diet, change your nutrition, 
So there's no treatment for intestinal permeability. Why? Because I said that this is not a disease. It's a state that you're in. And there's no drug for it. So there's for the drug company don't make billions from that. So there's not a lot of economic interest in talking about it, although there's tons of research because intestinal permeability can lead to other diseases like autoimmune disease, like brain fog, like depression and anxiety, these cognitive symptoms. It can lead to digestive issues like GI complaints. And by the way, GI complaints is, you know, really putting a drain on a healthcare system. All the hospital visits people go to the hospital for because their tummy doesn't feel right. It costs about $136 billion per year in the United States to manage GI complaints alone. So it's a big burden on our society. So there's a lot of people with GI complaints and it may not be due to something that you can fix with a drug because it may be due to intestinal permeability or leaky gut. You may have food sensitivity that doesn't clear up for you. Despite what you eat, despite the fact that you're super clean, you cut out all the food, and yet you still have unpredictable food reaction. Especially one day you eat this food you're fine, the next day you eat the same food you're not fine. That unpredictable food reaction may be due to intestinal permeability. So you have brain symptoms, you have immune symptoms, you have gut symptoms. And then lastly, you may have immune system problems from intestinal permeability. That will be autoimmune disease, suspected or already diagnosed that you have, or maybe inflammation symptoms you have in your body, swelling, you can't, you know, fingers tight, you can't close the fist real good first thing in the morning. You may have chronic pain, fibromyalgia. So these are all symptoms associated or diseases that can come as a result of intestinal permeability. So everybody treating the symptom of that, but what's the root cause? It may be this. So again, do your homework, go to pubmed.gov, type in intestinal permeability, put in the comment section how many citations you find, because that exercise will change your mind about leaky gut, intestinal permeability, and what it can do to your health. And also raise a really interesting question, why your doctor's not talking about it? Why do they don't test for it? They don't test because there's no drug, there's no treatment. You have to manage it naturally. Right? Just like if you're overweight, it's not necessarily a drug. You just got to eat better and exercise. And do you go to your doctor for that? Or do you go to a personal trainer or a health coach for that? You go to the right people, right? So here is different type of intestinal permeability. So back to this, we have the in in intestinal lumen, which is the opening, the inner opening of your gut, which is here. This is the intestinal tract, just like this. And these are the epithelial cells and these are the villi. We have these proteins that hold the gap together, kind of like the mortar or the, the glue that glue these walls together. And the space is called a tight junction. So your immune system can actually survey the environment and see what's good or bad and elicit an immune response. Leaky gut is normal, it's not bad. Hyper leaky gut, hyper intestinal permeability, meaning too much. Think of the elevator door. You know, if you go to your grocery store, you walk in, the electric door open when you walk in and you, after you walk through it, the door shuts. That's normal. Keeps the bugs out, right? Keep the dust out. If you walk through this, the store, the door opens and never shuts behind you. Just get stuck open at the grocery store, always open all the time. That would not be good because bugs and animals and dust they all just come in and out of the store. The store will be chaos. So when you have leaky gut, that's normal as long as it closes back up. When it doesn't, it's stuck open, that's when you have problems. That's why it's called hyper leaky gut or hyper intestinal permeability is the problem. So how, what does that have to do with the different types? Because you can have leaky gut several different ways. One way is that you can have a paracellular breach, okay, paracellular Para means next to each other. So that means you can have leaky gut that's in between cells, para between the cells. Paracellular means you may have leaky gut this way, where the tight junction has been breached and these protein called zonulin has been damaged, allowing undigested particles like microbes and proteins and dietary proteins to just leak in and out nilly-willy. Now, as these dietary protein, let's just say these guys, 
leaks out into the outside of the gut. Remember, this is the inside of the gut. When it leaks out, now it's outside of the gut. Let's say it went from inside to outside. Now it leaks outside, your immune system is going to freak out. Let's just call them white blood cells. We'll start to attack this dietary protein. And that's going to trigger inflammation. And this is how leaky gut creates a double whammy of malabsorption and inflammation due to this type of leakage, right? That's why they call it leaky gut. That's a layman's term, the scientific terms of intestinal permeability. In any case, when these protein leaks out, then you're going to elicit an immune response. That response is inflammation. And inflammation is systemic. It goes everywhere. It's not localized in the gut. And by the way, you can have leaky gut and not have any GI symptoms. You don't have to have gas or bloating or gut pain to have leaky gut because the systemic inflammation usually shows up in your brain, as in brain fog, depression, anxiety, or fatigue. It'll show up systemically as inflammation in your joint, chronic pain, cardiovascular issues, blood vessel problems. It shows up many different ways other than just in the gut. In fact, it shows up as autoimmune disease. Why? Because as your immune system started getting ramped up, these proteins just getting leaking out. Remember that, out, that grocery store door is open all the time. Stuff just coming in and out. There's no control whatsoever. These guys just leaking out all the time. And the more this is leaking out, the more your white blood cell gets ramped up. Because it's like, what's all this protein leaking out doing? So you get more and more immune response until your immune system gets such an increased response where now you're sensitive to everything under the sun. This is where you can't eat nothing. You're sensitive to every food. You can't figure out what food you're eating because it's no longer the food. It's the fact that your immune system is getting out of whack and that's how you develop autoimmune disease. So that's paracellular. That's one way you can have leaky gut. The second way you can have leaky gut is called transcellular. Transcellular means it's through the cell. This one's between the cells, between these tight junctions. Transcellular is when you have damage straight through the cell. You just bust open right down the middle. It's like you take this wood block, you chop it in half. It's just busting through the cell. This cell is just completely broken, and you have these proteins and micro leaking out, and that's called a transcellular pathway. Leaky gut, second way. The third way is through what's called lipopolysaccharide. And lipopolysaccharide is a bacterial endotoxin. The lipo means fat. Poly means many. Saccharide means sugar. So it's a fat and many sugar molecule. Sometimes we use the acronym LPS because it's lipopolysaccharide. Bacterial endotoxin. So if you have this positive on the intestinal permeability test, we find elevated number of this, this indicates that you have a gut infection, most likely bacterial in origin because bacteria produces this, not candida, not parasite, not virus. So most likely it's a bacterial in origin, dysbiosis, bacterial overgrowth, and that this LPS actually is so toxic that the minute this LPS particle touches the gut lining, Instantly, leaky gut right away. This is one of the known causes of leaky gut because this toxin is so toxic, as soon as it touches it, you just split it right open. This can cause paracellular leaky gut, the LPS can, the bacterial endotoxin can cause breach or breakage between the cell, or the LPS can cause transcellular leaky gut where it just breaks the cell in half. So you can have leaky gut either way. In any case, if we sign, see lipopolysaccharide, that is a sign that you have leaky gut because that's what it does. So leaky gut can be diagnosed three ways. Increased actomyosin, let's use blue. So this intestinal epithelial cell layer on lab tests will be picked up as actomyosin. If the antibody to that is positive, that indicates a uh, transcellular 
leaky gut because the, the, the cell is actually damaged itself. So acromyosin is what we're looking at here. The paracellular of this, it will be zonulin antibody positive. So if we see zonulin antibody positive, it will tell us that you have trans or paracellular between the cell damage. The tight junction is open up wider. And if we have LPS antibody positive, then that's a third way you can have leaky gut. So leaky gut and lab tests that I look for are an actomyosin antibody, zonulin antibody, or LPS antibody. Now you could have all three. And what does that mean? That means you probably have bacterial infection of the gut, and that's causing both paracellular and transcellular between the cell and through the cell damage, leaky gut, which remember leads to chronic inflammation, which leads to autoimmune disease, chronic food sensitivity. So this is where no matter what you eat, you just don't feel better. Okay. So now how do you do differently? Depends on what these findings are. If you just have the, the transcellular finding, this will indicate that you have some kind of damage to this muscular tissue, but it may or may not do to bacteria because LPS is not positive. So just for this by itself, indicate that you have some damage to the actual muscular tissue here, the epithelial lining, as well as the cell itself. It could be due to autoimmune, most likely, because the autoimmune typically damages tissues like celiac disease. Remember we talked about how celiac kind of just make this area flat. Instead of having fingers, it just destroy those fingers, so it's flat. So autoimmune can create that type of pattern. If you have a paracellular where the tight junction is busted, the space is open, but the cells are not busted. So this is normal, this is normal, but this one is, the zonulin is positive. That's usually due to some kind of food reaction, toxicity, stress, blush, or some kind of problem within your body that's damaging this tight junction protein. Just by the way, gluten is a known trigger for leaky gut through the paracellular pathway. It's known to bind to zonulin and damage it. So that's why food elimination may be important in some people. However, if you have cut out everything in your diet and you're still having problems, and we see LPS positive, that means you may have a gut infection that's causing the leaky gut. Then we'll go after the gut infection, meaning, okay, is it bacteria? Most likely it is, but usually when I see bacteria, the way gut infection works, it's like cockroaches, you know? If you, if you turn on the light in your kitchen, you see one cockroach, there's probably a whole bunch that you're not seeing just you know under the covers or uh, other places. So usually when I see bacteria, I probably see looking for candida, I'm probably looking for parasite and other things. So we have to look for infection. So the treatment will be directed for clearing gut pathogen and there's tests we can do specifically to detect what kind of pathogen that we're dealing with so we can get really specific. Versus if we just have leaky gut, maybe we just need to clean up the diet. Now, if you already cleaned up the diet, then what the heck? It could be an autoimmune mechanism or some kind of toxicity. So this type of information is really key if you know how to understand it and what to do about it, more importantly. A lot of people have the test data. The doctor might, you know, if you see a functional doc, they might do the test and say, everybody takes the same supplement. But in reality is that everybody don't take the same supplement. Not in my practice. It's all individualized, customized. And this starts with a 15-minute free discovery call with a member of our team to kind of find out if you're a good candidate for, for our program and what is an ongoing concern, what are your goals are, what are your obstacles are, what are you stuck on? So we can help you to point you to resources within our free online content on YouTube or Facebook that you can use to help yourself or if you need more detailed diagnosis like this, you can schedule a case review with us and then we can walk you through that. We do this through video consultation, doesn't matter where you are in the United States, I can help you. We can order tests, except New York, they're kind of weird. The state law is weird. They don't allow people, uh, doctor from out of town to order blood tests. But other than that, all continental United States is good to go. So please schedule a 15 minute free discovery call so I, my team can talk you through it and point you to the right resource. And if it's a good fit for me to talk to you, then we'll set up that appointment. In the meantime, please like and share this video if you found it helpful. And as always, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and PeterConDC, youtube.com PeterConDC and our Facebook page at Hope Integrated Wellness. Please share this video with as many people as possible so people can get the benefit of this knowledge. And I look forward to seeing you next week at the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Take care.